Hi everyone, I'll just wait for the notification to see that we're live and then we'll go into the next part of this. Okay. So just waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, so I've got the notification up. I'm going to start. So as you have seen, we have a GoFundMe account up to help the lady in Kalgoorlie so that we can raise some money for rent money so she can stay in her house while she gets things sorted um, because there's things behind the scenes with what's going on with the courts. Things are moving very fast all of a sudden um, and hopefully um, things will change, we hope, because all of a sudden her lawyers come in, um, her psychiatrist is in, um, all sorts of things are happening behind the scenes today, including the... New Zealand High Commission um, will be contacting her, or they may have already done so. I've sort of like left her alone for a couple of hours because it was like full-on phone calls between us and then phone calls coming in all over the place. So if you can help and donate to that uh, GoFundMe account, please do because we want to try and make sure that she's got enough to pay the rent, you know, for at least a month while she gets herself sorted out um, and why we do this fight. Remember, this parent is not activating her card um, and that's been advised for her not to do that, right? So, therefore, she's going to need all the help that she can get. So, yep, whatever you can spare, guys, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, it doesn't matter. Whatever you can spare, please, if you can donate to the GoFundMe account, please do. So... You guys will remember Sophie, who's had problems in the past. She came from the Hinkler region to Victoria, been stuffed around with rent, been stuffed around when she was moving, right? Then this morning, um, rent declined again. So Sophie has spent six hours on the phone today, done two lots of uploads, had two panic attacks, had about eight different operators over three hours of on-hold music, and she can't find out tomorrow whether or not she's going to be allowed to pay her arrears and her rent. She spent the whole damn day on the phone from 9.30 this morning. She stopped for lunch. And then she went back to it this afternoon, right the way through. And she still hasn't got a decision. After eight different operators, right, can't make a decision whether she's going to be allowed to pay the arrears that they've run her into already on her grandmother's property and her grandmother needs the money to pay her mortgage so i'll update you as that comes in but at this stage the whole day spent on the phone and she hasn't got anywhere it's not good enough and ruston is not good enough services australia people should be allowed to pay their rents stop stuffing up people paying their rents stop blocking people paying their rents and stop causing it that the owners can't pay their mortgages because this is getting ridiculous. All you are doing, and this seems to target single mums with small children. And when I say small children, Sophie has a one-year-old child. Oddly enough, the lady in Kalgoorlie also has a one-year-old and an 11-year-old. Tempest has a baby that's about 12 weeks old. Mahalia has a 11 week old. Stop targeting single parents with very young children. Stop targeting. Look, just stop the damn card. It has failed. Stop the lies. Stop the bullshit. Stop the waste of taxpayers' money, right? And start putting it into the services for housing and the services that people need. Common sense stuff where people can get the help if they need it. And leave those that were fine beforehand, that you've destroyed their credit ratings, let them get back on their feet. This is ridiculous. This is every day I'm getting stories in of people who can't pay their rent, all right? People being denied an opt-out, people being denied their rents being lifted from zero, right? People just being denied and declined and run into debt purposely by the department. Enough is enough. It has to stop. Okay? If you can't pay people's rents properly on their due dates, then you have no business 
interfering in the process in which they have to pay it. So you need to release their money so that they can pay their debts, they can pay their arrears, they can pay their rents. Because you're making too many people homeless. Bottom line, and the more and more owners that get jacked off with this will not let people on the card rent their homes. You'll have more and more homeless families and people living in tents and people living in cars. It's not good enough. Australia should not have anybody living in a tent with their children or in cars or sleeping on the streets. This is the year 2021, not 1821 and not 1921. Right, we're supposed to have progressed past all of that. But LNP is determined to drag us all that way back. You know, not good enough. Not good enough. Anyway, I'm going to leave it for today. I've got to go to the shop. <laughs> um, it's been a really, really busy day for me as well. And um, really stressful for everyone. But as I said, if you can chip in to the GoFundMe to help the lady in Kalgoorlie, that would be very appreciated. Um, you know, we're getting there. We just want to make sure we could get enough money. That money goes directly to her. You know, it doesn't come through us in any way. It goes directly to her, right? Um, and I know that she is absolutely shocked that somebody's done this for her. She was crying on the phone to me earlier. Um, but as a community, you know... We have to stand by each other. This government is going to kick the shit out of all of us if we don't. And um, and I know it's very appreciated. Any help that you can give. This woman didn't ring us asking for help. She just rang us to tell us what was going on and stuff like that. And never expected anybody to help her. But we do what we can. All right. And, and hopefully we can uh, keep her and her kids going until this can be sorted out. Right, until we can get a definite situation. There's a lot of people involved in trying to get this woman's um, card cancelled. Right, As I said, she hasn't activated yet, so it's going to be easier for the department to reverse it because she hasn't activated, she hasn't contracted with them as yet. So it's easy for them to reverse the decision. We know they can. They did it a fortnight ago for a grey known map in Northern Territory, they reverse the decision within an hour. Okay, they can do it. So, you know, um, uh, Jenny Elliott says, I don't know how you keep going. I just do. I just do. Um, I don't know how I'd cope with it myself. It was happening to me, but I just keep going because, and I will keep giving the card holders a voice and a platform and if any any card holders out there want to tell me their stories or they want to do videos or they want to join in zoom meetings with us right whatever we will keep going because we have to the public need to be aware of what's going on oh, a little bit of um something this afternoon somebody rang um i'll just find it for you because it's quite interesting to say the least. <laughs> so let's put it this way. An LNP staffer let the cat out of the bag regarding age pensioners going onto the cash just debit card. And um, I'd say LNP staffer is probably going to get his butt kicked. But he spilled the beans and now it's everywhere on Twitter and across all the pages. And I'm just, I just want to pull it up so that I can quote it, read it properly. For you hang on um, because I don't want to misquote it so so a staffer and I won't name him but I do know his name okay um, from uh, Gillespie LNP office does a whoops and reveals the LNP plans and propaganda strategy for putting age pensions onto the Indu cashless debit card for us, it's for our own good age pensioners. So um, somebody had a heated discussion with a gentleman in Dr. David Gillespie's office in Walcott in New South Wales. And when she spoke to the person about the card, he said, there's no problem with the card and it'll be much safer for the elderly instead of cash. As if they need to be protected. 
so um yeah so there you have it guys and it's on the pensioner groups it's on twitter it's everywhere good luck mr gillespie you know your staffer got a little bit upset with the lady that he was busy abusing and he, he went off script what a shame all right but there you have it folks so um i'll say good night for now um because I've got to charge up my phone. I've got power back. Unlike a lot of Queensland that doesn't have power. We had major power outage due to a uh, a whole power station blowing up north of me. So um, a lot of Queenslanders are without power at the moment. So um, I'll talk to you guys probably tomorrow. Um, I'll, be, I'll let you guys know, as I know from other people, um, what's happening and what's progressing. But yeah, um, yeah, share that. If, even if you can't donate to the GoFundMe, share it to your pages and your networks. We really want to help this person as fast as possible just to give her a cushion so that she can keep that roof over her head while she's fighting. You know what I mean? And why, while her psychiatrist and a psychologist and her doctors and her lawyer are all fighting for her as well. And bear in mind that this person is a New Zealand national and uh, the continental has been, um, the New Zealand High Commission has been notified and is going to be ringing back, ringing her back. So I'll be waiting to hear the result of that as well. So, um, all right, guys, thank you very much for listening and all the help you do and the support. And uh, as I said, if you're on the card, speak up, speak up, keep speaking up. Labor has said they will scrap the card. Now tell them what's wrong with it. Give them the ammunition. Fill, them, fill their email boxes with your stories of what's been happening to you on the card. Send it to us, right? Send us your videos, whatever. But now's the time to do it and keep pushing, okay, guys? Because the only way we're going to stop it and get people off the card is to expose it all and throw it all out there so that Anne Rustin and her little propaganda team can't keep spreading lies and just calling cardholders liars. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. For what Anne Rustin did, um, we saw on the Marcus Paul page this morning, right? It was all absolute lies, denying these people's issues and saying that Mahalia's problem has been fixed. We don't know if it's been fixed properly, right? It took six weeks to let her pay two weeks' rent. She still couldn't buy food at that shop late last week when she went back all right so i'm sorry as far as i'm concerned if she's reporting back to me that she still can't buy food she went to buy lettuce and tomato then as far as i'm concerned it's still not fixed so anyway all right guys i'll talk to you later see ya